Hey, Most Amazing Top 10 family, I'm your host, Chade Rain, and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. When I was a kid, Pokemon cards, Beasties, Yu-Gi-Oh! were all kingpins of our entertainment. I watched so much anime growing up, I have an urge to laugh maniacally right before I show you my true power. Uh, 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 uh. Now kids play Fortnite and yell racist slurs over Xbox Live, but no matter what toys you grew up with, you don't want some demonic spirit attached to it. And to prevent you from ever making this horrible mistake, I am bringing you today's list of top 10 scary demon toys you shouldn't play with. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. And stick around for the whole video because I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts. You guys seem to love them. If any of you at home are looking for some more Most Amazing Top 10 content, hit us up on Instagram. And if you need some merch, check out the link in the description below. Remember, you can use the offer code MA10 for $5 off, which means you can grab a t-shirt for 10 bucks. You could get this shirt for 10 bucks. It's a sweet deal. All right, and without taking any longer, let's get into this list. At number 10, we have the Haunted Doll Gang. What a better way to kick off this list than not with just one haunted toy, but an entire gang of demonic dolls. The Haunted Doll Gang sounds like a group of French thugs from a strange black and white independent movie, but it's actually a real thing. A paranormal investigator with a passion for collecting things has been putting together a group of haunted dolls. What could go wrong when you bring a bunch of pale face toys with spirits attached to them into the same place? I don't know, they'll probably just have a tea party, who cares? Their names are Crystal, Monica, Charlotte, True, Isaac, Lily, Cameron, and Ashley, and their owner has all of them set up with a camera constantly running just in case they do anything spooky. He doesn't want to miss one moment of potential ghost activity. The dolls have been caught on camera moving and talking, doing all sort of creepy stuff, and sometimes you can even hear them giggling, which is the creepiest thing a doll can do. He has a camera set up in his hallway, which caught footage of a ghost boy walking around at the bottom of his stairs. Yeah, I wonder what caused that to happen. Maybe the gang of haunted dolls you have in your home? All right, at number nine, we have the Island of Dolls. Time to go even bigger. Now we've got a whole island of dolls that have a creepy demonic force attached to them. This has to be one of the creepiest places in the whole world. This place used to be just a regular old island just south of Mexico City, but then its owner, Julian Barrera, decided to do a little redecorating. He found a girl's dead body in the river right outside his home. Next to this girl's body was a doll, who he assumed was the girl's doll. He was afraid the girl's spirit was going to be angry and was going to start to haunt him, so he decided to hang the girl's doll from a tree in a way to please her. If it was me, I would have just moved. Well, apparently doing this didn't work because the girl's spirit was still unhappy, so he hung up more dolls, hundreds of them. The scariest part about this story is Barrera was found dead in the same spot that the girl was found. So don't play with a demon's toys unless you want to end up going crazy and decorate an entire island with dolls and then die in the same spot you found the demon ghost body thing that happened. You know what I mean. At number eight, we have the clown doll from Poltergeist. This guy haunted my dreams for like five years. I watched Poltergeist when I was six and then I was like, oh, clowns and dolls are gonna haunt my nightmares for the rest of time, thanks. In the 1982 classic Poltergeist, a house is built on an Indian burial site, and after a family moves into the house, things keep going downhill. Demons possess everything in the house and start tormenting the family. Throughout the movie, we see the family son constantly check in on that creepy clown sitting in his room before he goes to sleep. Every time I see that part of the movie, I'm like, just move it out of your room. You already don't like it, why are you leaving it there? Well, the kid doesn't, and then it tries to kill him. The arms grow out like these long ropes, and then it tries to strangle him to death while you can hear the clown chuckle. Let's watch. At number seven, we have Billy from Dead Silence. For those of you who haven't seen Dead Silence, it's about an evil ventriloquist doll who's attached to some sort of demonic force who is also his owner who is a demon, but they're both dead. It's kind of a convoluted plot, and you think a horror movie about ventriloquist dummies would have done a lot better. I mean, all the pieces are there, but not everything gets to be a smash hit. Even though this movie didn't impress the critics, it has an especially creepy villain. Billy the ventriloquist doll wants to kill you, but first make you scream. Once you let out a big howl, he will rip out your tongue and then give your body to his ghost master who will then turn you into a doll. It sounds like all the worst parts of dying wrapped into one. You get frightened, mutilated, and then your body is used as an art piece for a dying performance art. At number six, we have Sid's toys from Toy Story. 
I don't know if you guys are going to agree with me on this one because the whole point of Sid's toys and Toy Stories was that they looked scary but they were actually kind and had a passion for justice. But I'm going to reach into my own fanfic theory of what happened to those toys that attacked Sid. So the toys revolt, then they turn against Sid and do stuff to him that will probably leave him heavily medicated for the rest of his life. Yeah, they really torment him bad. Now what happens after? Do these toys just sit in the room waiting to be thrown into the trash? Or do they start a revolution? They got a taste for revenge and now they want more. This is the beginning of the toy army rising up against us and ending all of our lives. And we don't know what gives these toys in Toy Story their ability to live. Maybe they get their consciousness from the same thing we do. Or maybe demons could possess them and then use them as little soldiers in their dark army. I know this is a far fetched idea of demonic possession, but all I'm saying is that there are villains in the Toy Story universe, so who knows there could be demonic toys too. And if I was one of those toys, I would start killing things as soon as I knew I had the upper hand. At number five, we have Pimp Doll. I just found out about this while making this list and I had to include it because it's one of the cheesiest things I have ever seen. Pimp Doll is one of the villains from a movie called Blood Dolls. First of all, the plot of this movie is ridiculous. It's about an evil genius who turns people into dolls so they can kill his enemies and the budget is terrible. All the special effects are horrible. Everyone in the movie is over sexualized and the main doll doing all these killings is Pimp Doll. I haven't watched the movie so I don't know what kind of horrible spirit is inside pimp doll but I knew but I do know that he loves killing so he could be demonic I just wanted to get him in because it's so ridiculous you guys need to know about this in the trailer alone he kills like eight dudes for that reason I think he fits perfectly on this list you don't want to play with him because he'll probably just kill you and he's got some sort of evil soul inside him see it's all lining up so you need to do yourself a favor and watch this trailer the trailer is so poorly put together it's so cheesy and so bad it's from 1999 but it looks like it's from 1971 at number four, we have Charlie. Okay, if you buy a new home and then you go into the attic, then you look in a trunk and there's a creepy doll in there covered in Bible verses, just burn it. Don't ask any questions. Don't keep it in your home. Just burn the thing like it's the last day of Burning Man, naked and on acid. Enjoy yourself. Well, back in 1968, a family in New York did everything I just described, except for the part where they burned the doll. They found Charlie in a trunk and he had papers with Bible verses on him and they decided to put him in their collection of other dolls. He was a nice little addition to their home. Well, Charlie immediately started to get back on his bullshit. He would move around the house, knock stuff over. Things started to get really spooky when the family's daughter said that Charlie would come into her room at night and talk to her. The parents thought it was nothing, but then they started to take it seriously when she woke up with scratches that had appeared on her body overnight. After that, they took Charlie back to his jail in the attic. Once again, why wouldn't you just burn him? You're leaving him there for the next family to find. That's not a nice thing to do. At number three, we have Chucky, probably the most famous killer doll of all time. This wouldn't be a list of demonic toys without him and yes I know that Chucky doesn't have a demon inside of him per se but it's the soul of a serial killer that got locked inside a doll through black magic and then goes on a massive killing spree that's all the pieces of a demonic force Chucky is of course the star of the 1988 classic child's play and has been tormenting people ever since then he is a kill count of 67 and is definitely part of the slasher hall of fame I don't know if that's a real thing but if it was Chucky would be in there for sure at number two we have Hugo from Dead of Night. Dead of Night is a 1945 classic. Even though it's in black and white, has some dated acting and is now kind of cheesy, it still manages to send a shiver down my spine. The movie is about a ventriloquist dummy named Hugo and his master Maxwell. Right from the beginning of the movie, you get this strange feeling about the dummy. Every time someone's left alone with him, I start to feel uncomfortable. As the movie progresses, we start to see it come to life and begin to take over Maxwell. Now it's never clarified whether or not Hugo is possessed by some sort of demon or Maxwell as well as slowly slipping into some sort of psychotic state. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the movie, Hugo is the master and Maxwell is the puppet. If you're a fan of classic horror movies, then this is one you should not pass up. All right, for the number one spot, we have Harold, one of the more famous haunted dolls that have been thrown down the internet one of the more famous haunted dolls that have been thrown around the internet in recent years. 
Harold was sold on eBay back in 2003 by Greg Mishka. He was selling the doll for $300 and it came with a warning. He said he had bought the doll at a thrift store and ever since it came into his life everything had been horrible. He would randomly get extremely sick, one of his pets died and his financial situation was going downhill. However, this warning did not stop the doll from being sold. Since then the doll has been passed from person to person, everyone trying to get rid of it because it apparently ruins your life. A man who came in contact with the doll shortly died right after from a brain tumor and one of Harold's previous owners died from falling down the stairs. This doll doesn't pull any punches. The crazy part about this is Greg Mishka, the guy who originally sold the doll, said he made the whole thing up. It was a story he just concocted so he can make a little bit of money off a doll that was worthless. So is the curse real? Did the curse get fabricated from people thinking it's real? Or is there a demon attached to it? I don't know. This is a demon list of demon stuff so obviously I think there's a demon on it, right? Alright everyone, that is our list and as promised I'm going to be doing more pet shoutouts. Remember if you want me to shout out one of your pets, you can hit me up on Instagram and I'll do my best at getting back to you so I can send out a shout out to your pets. But I got a huge backlog right now, so it might take me a little bit of time. Just be patient. First up, we have Sean's cat, Jerry. Sean said black cats are bad luck, but Jerry has been nothing but good luck for him. I'm so happy you have Jerry, Sean. He looks super cute. Alicia wanted a shout out for her two dogs, Theo and Milo. Theo is the light brown cutie, and Milo is the dark brown handsome boy. Two good boys, and I bet they're good buddies. Next, we have Jade's cat, Missy. She looks chill. She's like too chill. Like she ate too many carbs, and now she's going into a food coma. That's exactly what I look like after I eat a whole pizza. Brandon sent over a picture of his dog Russell. He looks like the kind of dog that is so tiny but still manages to take up so much of the bed. And finally, Sammy wanted to shout out for her four cats. Serenity, Raiden, Pikachu, and Pumpkin. Four cats in one house. That's a lot of lifted tails and pink buttholes. Alright everyone, that is our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. If you guys need more Most Amazing Top 10 content, come check us out on Instagram. And if you're looking for some Most Amazing Top 10 merch, like the shirt I got on here, you can check out the link below. Use the offer code MA10 to get $5 off, which means you can grab a shirt for only 10 bucks. And there's sweaters and a whole bunch of other stuff there too. It's tons. You guys are going to love it. Until next time, I've been Chaterana, and I'm going to stick to Pogs. I bet you guys don't even know what pogs are. <laughs>